The trams in Edinburgh have now become a clear staple of the city, with them being one of the first things you'll see touring the city or as you leave Edinburgh Airport. So how did these trams come to be and what are the future for them? The plans for the trams in Edinburgh were originally much grander than the current network, with plans to have lines running all the way from Newbridge to the city centre, then to the northern suburbs of New Haven and Granton. These plans were submitted to the central government in London for funding who awarded a contract to Transdev, but their plans eventually caved and were shelved. Therefore, the council introduced the concept to the Scottish Parliament for funding and approval in 2006. Lines 1 and 2 were passed, but it was concluded that funding the entire proposed network would be impossible. But then, in 2007, the system came under threat, as the SNP, the Scottish National Party, announced in their manifesto that they were planning to scrap the project to save an estimated £1.1 billion. Yet when it came down to it, the actual vote, the SNP didn't have enough support to stop the project, so they went ahead anyways, on the single condition that no more public funding would be given or awarded to the project. So after that, the final stages of planning were nearly over, with approval to construct the line and subsequent contracts being given to CAF, Bilfinger Burger and Siemens to design and construct the network, yet external factors and pressure caused Phase 1B to be cancelled to cut costs in 2009. Construction started in 2008, and though it would be fraught with issues between the consortium of companies prior mentioned and Thai, the body set up to oversee the project, over both construction and funding for the system, causing delays in construction, with the system we know today opening at the end of 2014. The network hosts just one type of tram, the CAF Urbanos Freeze, of which they have 27 in service. Low floor trams can be found in other systems like Nottingham and Croydon's Tramlink. In recent years, the council has undertaken efforts to survey the feasibility of several extensions to this network in Edinburgh but the single one to be accepted back in 2019 was the extension of the network northbound to New Haven, similar to the original and planned Phase 1B that was cut during the initial construction. The system in Edinburgh again shows us the feasibility of trams in cities of all sizes across the UK, but also is a perfect example of the often hard and drawn out nature of politics and actually getting such networks planned and constructed as seen with the extremely high £1 billion cost of the network. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.